Hello world! Greetings extraterrestrials! Welcome Matt Eaters, Pie Lovers, and People of the Dragon. What you're about to watch is the second installment to the Warble Pie series on how to make your own Warbler. If you haven't seen the original video, I'd recommend watching it first to get a better understanding of what I'll be rambling on about for the next few minutes, since this is going to be a more advanced tutorial than the first, and will go way beyond the mere concept of reproducing thermoplastic sheets. Warble Pie! God's thermoplastic gift to cosp... No, 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 wait, that was, that was last video, wasn't it? Anyway, Warble Pie enjoyed great success after its airing in April 2015, so much indeed that Cosferat decided they actually needed a new material on the market, and born was Warbler's Black Arts. To me, it will always be Warbler Pie. Though we cannot know for sure, this is probably one of the Renoflex grade sheets, with a sprinkle of carbon black added to it for pigment. While not as smooth as Warbler Pie, it is a step on the way and introduces a classic plastic practice, namely pigmenting your thermoplastic. To pigment a batch of Warbler Pie, you can use special pigments for polycaprolactone, for example those provided by Plastimake or Instamorph, which comes with dosage instructions in handy pellet form. But you can also use pretty much any other color, such as alcohol-based inks, acrylic paint or powder, vinyl or epoxy dyes, or pretty much any powdered pigment, including metallics or glow-in-the-dark powders if you fancy that. What won't work is water-based inks, since they won't mix well with the PCL. Adding the pigment is simple enough, just add 2-5% to to the mix and knead it in along with the filler. Since I built Bernie, I no longer have to worry about kneading to knead, but just simple pour a little pigment down the hopper along with the rest of the stuff. Basic procedure 1A when making the material and saves you a lot of time priming whatever it is you're building. In order to maximize your fun, however, you can make your own pigments. This I could talk about for hours, but I'm just going to go ahead and briefly touch the most important ones, or, well, the most useful ones at least. If you're more interested, there's an excellent Wikipedia article about pigments. But carbon black, for example, is, as the name implies, pretty much black. It's used in rubber tires, bike frames, mascara, paint and millions of other applications and it is dirt cheap. If you google it, you'll pretty quickly realize that it's nothing more than pulverized charcoal. Get yourself a single piece from the barbecue, grind it to dust and you'll have pretty much all the pigment you need for about a kilogram of Warble Pie. This is rather messy. Don't wear your best clothes nor somebody else's best clothes either, for that matter. Browns such as umber, sienna and ochre are usually made up from iron oxide, in essence, rust. If you live close to the sea, just wander down to the harbor and steal a few flakes from a steel structure. This, for example, is a perfect place to find some high-quality rust flakes. You'll want the kind that easily disintegrates when you put pressure upon it. Grind it down and you'll have an excellent foundation for gold details and similar warm top coats. White can also be incredibly useful, especially if you want a smooth white finish. Warble pie can already be made rather bright using flour, but with the addition of a white pigment such as titanium white, lime or calcium sulfate, you can get a smooth white warble pie without much trouble. Blackboard chalk is an excellent source for white pigment. Just grind them down uh, to white powder and you're all set. Just don't confuse them with other white powders. But, of course, you can do much more than just color pie black. You can go all psychedelic and make warble pie of all the colors! <laughs> If you want all the colors as base, I'd recommend a trip down to the art store and getting yourself a pack of colored crayons. These can also be ground down and used as pigment in your warbler pie. That aside, there are a few interesting options. Marble, for example. By combining two different colors and mixing them together rather sloppily, you can create marble warbler pie, or a marble pie, or a warblarble. No, I think we're gonna need a better name for that. Another benefit gained by using iron oxide in the polymer is that it now attracts magnets. Yes, you'll be able to attach your fridge magnets to your armor. 
Or you can magnet stuff closed and eschew the use of straps, buckles and the like. Lots of opportunities and I won't spoil your fun by revealing all of them. Be careful with metal powders though, since they conduct heat a lot better than uh, regular polymers do, and so will conduct heat a lot better to you, better than regular polymers. So if you thought Warbler was hot, if you mix metal into your Warbler pie, it's going to be even hotter. Use caution. One of the main advantages of Warbler pie compared to its commercial counterparts is its texture. While War Black and Cosplay Flex are improvements, they still need a few layers of gesso, wood glue, clay or other filler to get the surface level of flower-based Warbler pie. If you mix with a rougher filler, of course, you're going to get the same surface problems as with the commercial products, but the fine soft wheat flour allows us to do a lot of fancy stuff with Warbler pie that can't be done with regular Warbler or rough filler Warbler pie. Texturing, for example. Let's say you'd like to have wood grain, crocodile skin or space hexagons in your warbler pie. Getting that is not really much more difficult than heating the pie up and pressing your shape in. Of course you're going to need a negative if you're not going to sculpt it all by hand. A negative? Yes, a negative. That's the anti-texture of your pattern. It has ridges where it's supposed to have holes and valleys where it's supposed to have mountains. Or was it the other way around? To make one, you'll need a texture you'll want to replicate for your wobble pie. This can be anything from cloth or leather to bark or stone. Cover the texture with clay and make sure to press it into every detail. You'll always want to make a good first impression. Once your negative is dry, smear it with petroleum jelly, bacon, olive oil, mold release agent or anything else that will hinder the PCL from bonding with it. Then all you have to do is heat your warbler pie and press it into it, or send them both into the oven for a while. Remember that the hotter PCL gets, the more readily it will flow, so a low temperature might be safer to work with, but higher will give a more detailed result. You can make a negative in many other ways as well. If you have a laser cutter, for example, you can make specific patterns. A net such as this can be very useful in other applications, in spray painting, for example. But for warbler pie, there are mainly two ways to use them. First, you can heat the warbler pie and simply press the shape into it. You'll need some thickness to the pie to get a good texture, and some petroleum jelly or mold release agent will help you separate the pieces once it has cooled down. This will give you an indent, and with a proper negative, you can use this method for pretty much anything. Press uh, pencils, rulers, badges, flowers, small animals, uh, last year's tax refund protocols, or why not your old sewing machine? Okay, maybe not the sewing machine, but you, you get the jest. Secondly, you can hang shape it. I uh, don't really have a better word for it, but essentially you're just letting gravity do your work for you. Simply put the warbler pie on top of the net and heat it up. The soft warbler pie will start sagging through all the holes, and once it cools down in that shape, you will have a material with domes in the shape of the holes. Again, some form of release agent is essential for separating the parts afterwards. One of the biggest issues with the original Warbler Pie recipe was the size you could make, or uh, rather the size that you couldn't make. In the original Warbler Pie video, I told you that an A4 was about the biggest size of sheet you could make. And no one challenged this? Seriously? Come on, don't believe everything you see on the internet, okay? Anyway, there are two things stopping you from making really large sheets, and the first is friction, the second is loss of heat. High friction makes it harder to roll the warbler pie out flat. The pie sticks to tools and surfaces and refuses to move properly. Loss of heat means that the pie cools too quickly due to ambient temperatures being lower than the melting point of the plastic. So, uh, reduce friction and loss of heat and you'll be able to make larger sheets. Reducing friction is easy. You simply smear some petroleum jelly over your work surface and tools. Yeah, this is exactly what it looks like.
This will make your baking a lot easier and you'd probably achieve at least a medium sized sheet simply by implementing this. Remember to clean your sheet afterwards though since non-stick products also work for paint. To reduce loss of heat you can do lots of stuff. A friend with a hot air gun can help you keep it warm, you can preheat your tools and work surfaces, or you could simply do your baking inside of a sauna. Yeah, seriously, 6 degrees isn't that hot for a sauna. You might have to remove some clothes though, of course, and come up with a really good explanation for what the heck it is you're doing naked inside a sauna with a greasy rolling pin in one hand. Good luck with that. <laughs> a lot of people have complained about there being no glue surface on the Warbler pie, so I'm going to take a brief moment to explain how to do that. The glue in Warbler is actually not glue per se, but really a thin layer of polycaprolactone. And how to replicate this? Well, it is actually very easy. When PCL melts, it turns from solid into liquid. A very viscous liquid, but with about the same density as water. That means things that float on water also float on PCL. What also floats in water? A duck! Yes, but what I was about to say is that sawdust floats on PCL, okay? So when you heat it up sufficiently, filler will start floating towards the top surface, while the heavier PCL will accumulate at the bottom. And that's about it. Heat up a piece of pie on a flat surface, keep it warm for a while and allow it to cool thoroughly before attempting to pry it loose. Don't forget to give it a quick roll to smoothen out any irregularities your heating may have caused. As in previous cases, a release agent is a good assistant, but once all surfaces are cool, the pie will come off easily enough. Sadly, the finer filler is, the slower it will traverse upwards, which I believe is the main reason why black warbler doesn't stick as well to stuff as regular warbler does. It also means that it will be rather hard to make glue surface on flour-based warbler pie since the fine particles distribute so evenly throughout the pie. But it is possible, you just have to keep it warm for a longer time. We're almost at the end of this, but before you go, there's one thing that people have requested I put in this video. A comparison between the original and the pie. Naturally, it's going to be quite biased, but I'll let you draw your own conclusions from my observations. First of all, quality. Warbler and Blorbla are industrially produced sheets extruded in a continuous process. The overall quality of these sheets is immaculate. The quality of warbler pie, on the other hand, will rely entirely upon your skill as a baker. It's gonna vary between 1 to 2 millimeters in thickness, you're gonna get imperfections, you're gonna suffer from poor mixing and a few other problems that all come down to your level of skill. So don't give up just because you didn't succeed the first time. Functionality! Warbler is known for its many uses. Black Warbler has pretty much the same range. Warbler pie, on the other hand, can be modified to have pretty much any color, any surface quality, any rigidity, any toughness, any elasticity that you'd want to have, as long as you're willing to experiment with it, of course. Durability! Warbler is tough. Black Warbler, not so much. Warbler pie is fracking immortal, as long as you don't apply heat. Cost efficiency. A hot topic, if any. Let's compare using the local Warbler dealer here in Norway and the material sample shop for source for PCL. I'm neglecting the cost of filler materials since it's almost irrelevant. Regardless of the incomprehensible currency of Norske Kroner, it can easily be seen that you pay a lot for having the material sheet extruded or for pigment you can make in about 5 minutes. So never buy Warbler just to sculpt with it. Surface quality. This one's tricky. All three materials have one surface quality when raw and one surface quality after being heated up. This is mainly due to the grain size of the filler. When heated, the PCL retreats in between the filler grains in order to minimize surface area. Liquids do that. The larger the grain, the more prominent this effect will be and regular warbler is known to go bubbly when superheated. These are not actual bubbles, but simply the grain size that can be seen through the PCL. 
So I made some flour-based pie, heated all three of them, compared their surface afterwards, and sacrificed the little gold spray paint to show it better. No sanding, backling, glues, or other stuff was used, just a layer of gold paint. Since this is subjective, I'll leave grading them to you as observer. Acquisition time. Warbler is pretty easy to get. Simply order it online. Warbler pie, on the other hand, you have to make yourself. Clearly a point in Warbler's favor, unless, of course, you're like me, just enjoying the baking experience. And that's about it for Warbler Pie 2. I hope I gave you a few good ideas on how to apply all this, and perhaps even improve it for future generations. So, see you around, and happy crafting! <laughs>